Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We begin with a supply launch to our Almaz station around the moon. We have three stations around the moon, Lunar Gateway, Mir, and Almaz. Uh, Mir and Almaz are in relatively low orbits, but they are in frozen orbits. There are certain inclinations that we can use to keep something around the moon in a low-ish low orbit. It's not that low. But then there's Lunar Gateway in a super high orbit. But this is a new Glen which we are using in an expendable fashion, sorry, uh, in order to maximize the payload. During these Twitch live streams where I do all this, it's helpful to expedite and so obviously trying to land the first stage or even carrying a smaller payload is not necessarily the best idea. So basically we have the pressurized part of the HTV and I've added uh, separate fuel so we're not using the HTV's own propellant module. And there's a transfer and we're doing a correction high above the earth. Quick one there, you're still using the BE-3U engines. And finally we separate off of the New Glenn upper stage once we have gotten into a loose orbit around the moon. Rendezvous with any of the lunar stations takes a little bit of effort because they're not equatorial. The frozen orbits around the moon are uh, generally polarish. So here we are having corrected our inclination in order to get here using the high orbit and expending quite a bit of the propellant in this supply module. We use a claw to attach ourselves to the Alma station because it doesn't really have very good docking ports. So. Uh, yes, even the crew module up front is clawed to the station. I really ought to decommission that station by crashing it into the moon, but we continue on to other things. Uh, more arrivals at Mars. This is Make one b and Nesmeria arriving at the Red Planet. And of course this is the vessel using the Raidernix Special, which is an RD-502 converted to use uh, beryllium fluoride, lithium fluoride, liquid fluorine, pentaborane, and liquid ammonia. That is five propellants. And yeah, the benefit of that is that's more storable than hydrogen, but it's, uh, and also dense, but it doesn't get quite as good a performance as hydrogen and oxygen. I decided to send them to Phobos. And so we are capturing around Phobos while well, trying to, but Actually, I took too long. Uh, the Phobos encounter does not last for very long, so you really have to plan ahead and, generally speaking, start the burn before you even enter Phobos's sphere of influence. So I did not do that, and so we sort of missed the capture and went back out into Mars space, and I had to replot. We don't have a huge amount of fuel, and the reason I'm using only two in engines is because we ran out of ignitions on the others. So. Uh, this stage is going to be out pretty soon. You can see our Delta V's. We've got about 300 left. And the rest is... The, we've got methane and oxygen RCS to use, so there's that. But by the time we make orbit around Phobos, we're basically going to be out of everything. So, this is the capture burn around Phobos, finally. Having missed it the first time. And that is our orbit, which I'm adjusting with RCS, because that would be a little bit too low on the periapsis side. Of course, it doesn't take much RCS to fix it, because the orbits around Phobos are so slow. 8.7 meters per second there, you can see. So anyway, they arrive, so they're... I wouldn't say all set, but they're here. Next up was a Uranus supply vessel that needed a correction. And so that was done with its ion engines. And that is the result of the correction you can see there. So it is safely on its way to Uranus as planned. Next up we had a new tourist, a new paying customer. This is JM Studios wanted to go to Lunar Gateway and so I decided to use the pair. Launching on a Proton rocket from Cape Canaveral for some reason. The pair was designed to be used on the Proton rocket, so that's normal, but the pair is also 6.5 me uh, 6.6 meters in diameter, actually, and that necessitates the rather large fairing. The total diameter of the base of Proton is 7.6 meters, I believe, but the body of it's around 4-ish, so it does look a bit unwieldy. 
not impossible, but unwieldy. And so James Studios is on his way. Launching from Cape Canaveral, of course, was just an expediting thing because changing the launch sites would take extra time. Especially since we have so many missions actively underway, it, the scene changes take quite a long time because each time we have to save the persistent file and that is what generates quite a lot of lag. Okay, we've got hot staging on the third stage and separation of the second stage. So, all that being done, I discovered that we could just keep burning the third stage. It was in the right location so that it would keep us going towards the moon, so I took advantage of the fuel in that stage. And the pair continued after that. We didn't really have a plot to the moon, actually. We were just sort of winging it. But we got there. And so there's the capture around the moon. Rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway isn't generally an easy thing, but we were at a good time for it, I believe. There is still a bit of boil off on the hydrogen tank, though, so we are losing delta V like that. So the benefit that we got from using some of the fuel of the proton third stage to do translunar injection was largely gotten rid of by the boil off. Here we are rendezvousing with the weird contraption that we have standing in for Lunar Gateway. Docking took quite a few approaches, actually. I did not include all of them here, but yeah, it was a uh, sort of slapdash affair. I don't know whether it was because of the RCS configuration or I was just tired, but yep, there were a number of missed approaches, but we didn't break anything and ultimately we did dock. So there we go. All right, so JM Studios got his trip to Lunar Gateway and that is what it currently looks like. Here we are capturing a supply vessel around Mars. This is just food, water, and oxygen. But we are using the Attila thruster. So, so far we've used a five propellant engine, the Radernik Special. We've used a nuclear engine on the pair. We did have a conventional engine on the supply vessel to Almaz. Uh, this is the Attila thruster. This is a uh, futuristic augmented arc jet technology engine and it has the efficiency of an ion engine but better thrust. It does have a nuclear reactor attached to it so it's very heavy and it needs the radiators but uh, it is generally a good deal. A very good deal. It's a very good deal. It's, uh, it's one of those expediting things but conceivably we could use ion engines. It's just I didn't want to torture my audience any more than I had to. So, augmented arc jets it is. And here we are docking with the original arrival at Mars. This is Mars Station 1. And so we are just resupplying Durlaf and Desiski, and that was successful. So they're all good for a few years. And there are more things that we have to do around Mars. Next up is just the lander, but we would like to eventually land on Mars successfully. No guarantee that this lander is going to be the one though. And here it is capturing by aero braking rather than using a repulsive capture. And that was uh, generally successful. We picked a good altitude. It didn't really get too much heating. Inflatable heat shields wouldn't be very good for re-entry around Earth, but they're pretty darn good for Mars. Anyway, we got the apoapsis to 4,700 on the aero capture, but we do have to remember to lift that periapsis, otherwise it's going to go right back in the atmosphere, and that would not be good. So, successful capture of the lander, but we'll have to see whether we can actually use it as a Mars lander. This is George of Mars, arriving at Mars. It is George's intention, apparently, to conquer Phobos. George was not the first arrival at Phobos. He was the first launch to uh, Mars. Uh, with the intention of going to Phobos, but generally when you launch first, you arrive later. At least that's the pattern I've noticed. So anyway, he uh, docks with the vessel containing Meek 1B and Esmeria, and presumably they're one big happy, happy family around Phobos. This time I didn't mess up the Phobos approach uh, because we had the experience with Meek 1B and Esmeria. So we'll see what happens with Phobos. George has big plans. 
Here we have a Uranus return vessel that's headed out to Uranus in preparation for returning somebody, Miko, presumably, because Miko is the only tourist headed for Uranus at this point. Uh, so something to return Miko back to Earth. And it was doing a correction as it entered Jupiter SOI in preparation for the Jupiter slingshot, which it is doing right now, flipping around as it does. I didn't want to use extra propellant to stop it from doing that. Anyway, so it's on to Uranus, having gotten a boost from Jupiter. And here I'm trying to bring some Kerbals back from Lunar Gateway using that pair we had docked earlier. But something went wrong, I, I'm not entirely sure now what it was. But we spent a lot of time away from the station actually, even though it seems like we undocked and redocked immediately. Uh, you might have noticed that as we were redocking, the food, water, and oxygen had depleted quite a lot on the pair. So we spent a lot of time waiting for perhaps to transfer back to Earth, and it turned out that that didn't really work out for us, and probably the boil-off in the pair was too much for us to actually go back to Earth and bring ourselves back to low Earth orbit. So, instead, I launched a supply vessel to Lunar Gateway, and this is not a normal Saturn V. Uh, it's a normal Saturn V first stage, but then the second stage, somebody wanted to know what would happen if we put an F1 stage on the second stage. So this is an F1 second stage. Don't do this. It's not a good idea. But, okay, here we are testing it out. So F1 second stage and just a normal S4B J2 third stage. So normal Saturn V third stage. It's just the second stage that's sort of messed up. But there we have it. It's just a supply vessel for Lunar Gateway, so it's not as heavy as Apollo or anything. Otherwise, of course, replacing the good hydrogen engines on the second stage with the kerosene F1 would not be able to handle it. As it is, this is just a 25-ton payload. So it's 20 tons less than the payload capacity of Saturn V, though we don't actually use all the propellant in the J2. It could probably have done a little bit more than that. So, on that previous stage, we had some left over. Alright, this is off. And manages a barbecue roll. Very uh, convincing sort of barbecue roll going on there. As we depart Earth. And this arrives around the moon. Plenty of Delta V in order to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway. Even if it needs lots of corrections in high orbit to get to the right inclination. I do like these HTV-based supply vessels, they're the best. I probably should have sent some hydrogen over here though in order to fill up the pair again so that it could bring people back. I don't know why I did not do that. Uh, well, it was probably laying in the stream and I was a little bit muddled. But here we are docking with 17.5 uh, tons now. And adjusting for rotation on those docking ports. Anyway, there we have it. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.